Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Uh, today we're uh, starting to pull off some of the tarps on our overwintered no-till beds. This bed here was probably the worst one in an area that had been uh, severely neglected for a while. This bed had in it all kinds of grasses and perennial weeds as well as uh, some more pernicious uh, things like dock, nice root systems in it. And uh, so there's a lot of biomass on the bed. And so we were trying to, first of all, get everything that was alive, at least knocked back. Um, the grasses, this tarp has been on since the middle of December, about the 13th of December to be exact. We're the middle of March right now. So it's been about four months. And uh, I don't expect, because it was through the winter time, that everything would be gone. As a matter of fact, probably 70 to 80 percent of the actual dried biomass was probably still here because biology really slows down. However, most of the roots of the live plant material are either severely diminished or they're dead and a lot of the ground peeps like worms and things like that have been working on them. So some of the stuff, a lot of the top debris is going to be able to be raked off real easy. This bed we're not going to plant in until the middle of April. So we're starting now uh, first thing we're going to do is remove the tarps, pull all the excess off at the top, and that way any weed seeds that are on top of the soil, when we put the tarp back on for a couple more weeks, will begin to sprout. Then probably what we'll do after that, depending on what stage those weed seeds are in a germination, is we'll come through and do a quick flame weed, then we'll um, probably uh, fork it at that point to remove any big perennial weeds that are left, big perennial weed roots. And uh, then we'll also uh, go through and apply minerals and put a, probably about a two inch layer of compost on top. And then we'll put the tarps back on for a couple of weeks. And that'll take us to the middle of April. Hopefully we'll have knocked the weed seed bank way down and any of the debris that we raked off the top of the bed is gonna be put in the pathway today and with the tarp being over for almost a full month, it should, the biology should really start cranking up and it should start to work that down too, plus kill any weed seeds that are in that debris itself. So the debris will act as just kind of a, a mud weed barrier uh, mulch and um, then hopefully everything will be looking good. Now here's the irony. We spent a lot of time working on bringing this bed back, getting rid of all the grasses and all that stuff in it, and guess what we're gonna plant in here? ornamental grasses. Is that crazy or what? So we want to make sure we have a good clean bed and the ornamental grasses are a lot better looking than the stuff that grows around here is just pasture grass. And so hopefully uh, we'll have some really cool stuff in here this summer. So let's take the tarps off and see what it kind of looks like. We've gone through and we've taken the sandbags mostly off. I got a few left still to pull off to the side. But we can begin to open up the front here and take a look and just see what it's like after four weeks under a tarp. Wow, there's still a lot of biomass left. So, but there's not, there's only a few spots where we have live material. You can see there's some weeds that are still left, like right here is bindweed. That's unfortunate. We don't like that one. Um, we've got some of the irrigation headers and stuff are still in here, so we have to be careful. Uh, we're going to want to pull these drip tapes out. We left them in because it was easier to start to pull these guys out once the, uh, the stuff has really rotted down. As you can see, there's a lot of seed in here. Now, probably most of it's not viable, but if it is, like I said, it's going to fall down. We've got lots of worm activity going on here. It's going to fall down in the soil. We put the tarp back on. Um, hopefully, you know, as the weather's warming up, these weed seeds, grass seeds are going to germinate, and then we can come through with a flame weeder and just knock them down. So, first thing we're going to do here is pull the tarp off, all the way off. Then we're going to remove gently. Uh, we'll pull these drip tapes out. We should be able to undo the anchor on the end, pull those guys out, then we can rake all this debris in and uh, get it down to bare dirt. And as you can see, it's actually pretty easy to pull it off. And so when we use the rake, it's going to go pretty easy. And most of the stuff is like, it's either severely damaged and it'll come out, even though this has still technically got some life left to it as a grass, the roots are so damaged 
that uh, now's the time to pull it out. So, and, and then we'll leave, like I said, we'll recover this bed so that it, uh, you know, it doesn't get a chance to get itself reestablished. And then there's some perennial weeds like some dandelions and things like that that uh, we'll continue to knock back when we, we have the tarp over for another couple of weeks. If these things are still alive when we come back in a couple of weeks, and we'll do a follow-up video on that. Um, the forking of the bed will break the soil up and we'll be able to actually pull these out pretty easy. Let's go over and take a look at a segment that we un undid uh, yesterday. Um, this is going to be something we're going to plant larkspur in here very shortly. And it's kind of the same idea, although it didn't have as much biomass, it still had a fair amount of biomass on top. And we raked that off and forked it up and we're just kind of letting it. Uh, today we'll cover it back up tonight because uh, we're going to plant this, this, this next week. But we can get an idea what the soil looks like. So let's take a look. Okay, we're going to need about 50 feet of this bed this week. So what we did is uh, we untarped it, raked some of the uh, debris, which is very little debris. And you can look down here, it's not much, off to the side, and then forked the bed. And uh, the nice thing about this is even this is the middle of March, and we've had heavy rain this last week, the soil is actually in pretty good shape. It's got nice, nice worms. And so um, we're just letting it sit in the sun just for a little bit, for a few hours, and then we're going to cover this back up, and then over the next day we'll put on the azami cottonseed meal and uh, some fish bone meal and put the compost on. This bed will have about an inch and a half or so of compost, and then we'll be ready to plant the larkspur. Uh, the compost we're using is well rotted. We got it last fall. It's been sitting around for six months, so it's in it's in good shape too. And uh, as you can see, we can you know we've got a pretty good depth. This is March. This is a really wet area. This is heavy clay, and the tarping system seems to be working pretty good. So let's take care of the rest of it. We'll uh, pull the drip lines and uh, get the stuff off the other bed and get it retarped. Well, as we pull the tarp off, we had some interesting things. We can see that there's a few bowl holes, particularly in this back side of it. But what was really interesting, unfortunately, they moved real quick, so we didn't get a picture of it. But as I pulled the tarp off, there was like five good size, we're talking foot and a half, two foot long garter snakes who are in here already hunting. So Peek. this is great. It's great news because we have beautiful ranunculus on the other side over here. And so is, uh, I got some uh, help from the reptiles to uh, maybe control some of the vole population. And we're actually not seeing too many vole holes in here. For being untarped for like four months, that's pretty amazing. We do have some permanent thistle, per per permanent, it's almost permanent, perennial thistle that um, we're going to be working on this segment of our, our hypericum bed. Um, we're going to get some heavy mulch in here and try to kill those weeds off. And uh, it's probably going to be a summer's long project to nail that thistle and get rid of it. Other than that, um, I think we're ready to pull the drip lines out and then we can rake all the material off. We've got some blackberry, some dock, a couple of tufts of perennial grass that uh, hasn't quite bit it yet. but. Uh, this actually worked out pretty good for as bad as it was. Um, we had we had grass in here and all kinds of, of um, stuff that when we put this tarp on, we knocked down a material that was at least two feet high. And and we still got some rodent problems. It's like right here is a great a great rodent hole. And uh, it doesn't look like it's been too active though. And uh, so but that's what the snakes were probably working on. Okay, well, I'm going to pull the drip lines out and then get the stuff raked off. 